Right, thank you very much for coming back. Uh, can I check with you that you have the handout that says putting life into readings? It's one page with two sides, yeah? Okay. Now, this is nice. Um, <laughs> stroll down here and come back up. Check what you're doing at the back there. Excellent. So, uh, in this session, we're going to explore reading. And uh, when I worked with National Geographic material, there are very long reading texts in many of the magazines and the books and so on. But the problem we have as teachers is that we can use long texts in English uh, with our students in English. The problem we have that your students don't necessarily read long texts in Russian. And so they come to your English class and suddenly you give them very long texts, quite academic texts, that they perhaps wouldn't be familiar with in their own language. There's also a generational issue. There's something called Generation Y. And Generation Y students are aged between about 15 to 25. They're the current generation coming through upper secondary schools, universities, that kind of age group. And some of the people in the room look like that they probably fit into the Generation Y category. So I'm talking to you as well. Um, I am not Generation Y. Um, there was a survey done in the United States with some Generation Y students. This was a survey done in 2009. They surveyed what 18 to 21 year olds typically read in the average year in America. And the results were kind of interesting. Uh, they read about eight books per year and they don't read the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> so when it says eight books it means kind of dipping in, particularly at university where they're finding different bits of information. But the number of books we're reading for the younger generation is going down and down and down, which probably doesn't surprise you. They also read 2,300 web pages per year. So they're surfing the internet and getting their texts off the internet. So it's, it's still reading, but it's a different type of reading. Quite often it means they're reading shorter texts, they may be reading just a paragraph, but it's, and then they're clicking to something else. So the nature of reading is changing a lot. And you have something similar in Russia called Connect, so I understand, but they read about 1,282 Facebook profiles per year. So actually what our students tend to read at home is what their friends are having for dinner, the latest photographs from their holidays, the video that they've recommended on YouTube, and that's the type of reading that's going on. This is having an enormous impact on how we approach reading because our problem is that the generation Y are more visual than textual. They've been described as screenagers, not teenagers, but screenagers. <laughs> they love their screens, they get their information from screens, not from books. They're more visual than textual. They would rather look at pictures and video than read a text. And they would rather get their information through that medium than through a text medium. They're still addicted to information, possibly more addicted than I was when I was 20. They love getting information about all sorts of different things from different places. 
It's so easy to click on your mobile phone to get your information. You constantly want information on different topics. If they find something they don't understand, they Google it. They look on the internet. They find it that way. Um, but we've all become kind of addicted to not information in great detail, but little short bursts of information. Getting information quickly. And we are, or the generation, are multitaskers. Um, if I talk to my 10-year-old son, he can be playing a computer game, watching television, <laughs> and I can shout at him to do something, and I get even more angry and say, did you hear what I just said? And he's able to tell me exactly what I said. <laughs> I don't think I could have done that when I was 10. I was much more... Traditionally, they always say women are multitaskers and men are not. That's what my wife says. But I think it's also true for Generation Y. They are, because they're multitaskers, it also, in terms of the classroom, it means they're stimulated by lots of different things at the same time. And when we design classroom activities and tasks, we need to integrate our course book with our website, with our images, with our whatever else we're doing in the classroom. Lots of different things have to happen at the same time. So it changes the nature of the way we teach. But it's a problem for teaching reading because our students still need to read long texts to pass exams at university, to read technical documents, to read business documents. They still need these reading skills. So our question is, how do we encourage students to read in English when the reading that they're doing outside of class is not necessarily, not always, similar to the reading in class? It may be that we need to find ways to interest them, but it may be also that our classrooms need to reflect the way they read. So we're going to look at those, those areas. How do we encourage students to read in English? I think there are three key things that I would recommend it means that our texts, the reading texts we use, need to be based on authentic texts. If you're teaching technical students or business students, they're already authentic, that's fine. They need to be context rich. They need to be about real subjects. Quite often you can pick up course material and it's written in a way that isn't, doesn't feel real. It's not about something real. It's not context rich. And so it doesn't stimulate students. And culturally diverse, our world has become more and more culturally diverse, so the texts we choose need to be about lots of different cultural diversity in different places in the world. Our students need to read text critically. In the past, we used to give reading texts and we used to set comprehension questions, but we also need to be getting students to react to the information in the text and to think critically about it. Part of this problem comes that the information is coming from so many different sources, students need to be trained on how to judge whether the source is real, credible, serious, academic. It's very important. So we need to get them to think critically. And also I want to look at how we can integrate reading into other skills and other visual media. I don't think students read in isolation. They usually read and talk about it, or they listen to something and they read, or they write about something and they read. It's integrated with other skills. And it's also integrated particularly with video, for example, which I'll talk about. So there are three areas, I think, that are coming out of that, that we need to deal with in terms of teaching Generation Y students. Let's start with the authentic, context-rich area. I could give uh, a reading text to students on the topic of sport. And it could be something students were fairly familiar with. But they might be a bit bored. Do students really want to read about bungee jumping? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's a fairly safe kind of topic. We could choose a reading. It might be authentic, but it's just not context, what I would call context rich. With National Geographic material, it's kind of interesting because you can turn the page and you can look at the activity of jumping off an enormous bridge and throwing yourself down. So this was taken in New Zealand and the person is jumping a few hundred metres down into the river and then they bounce back up. 
but it might be more interesting to take a reading that looks at a similar activity but in a very different way. So here is the same activity in a different part of the world. Now here is the original type of bungee jumping. This happens on a Pacific island called Vanatu. And when the young men are aged about 14 or 15, they build a wooden tower. They climb to the top of the tower. They tie vines to their ankles. And they jump off the tower. Now the vines are the same length as the tower. If the vines break, <laughs> the boy crashes to the ground and he doesn't become a man. He goes to hospital. <laughs> if the vines don't break and he doesn't hit the ground, he passes into manhood. Now essentially that activity and that activity are more or less the same, but that this for me is kind of more interesting, more context rich, more cult it's about cultural diversity and I think it's a more motivating topic. So when we select reading texts, it's important to look at, are they context rich? Are they culturally diverse? The other important thing is authenticity. We often have a problem with using reading texts that are about something real. And it's very difficult to find texts that are authentic, but that students can read at a certain level. So if you look here, we've got elementary students to advanced students. And if we choose a reading text, we've got the level of the authenticity. So up here, we don't have to change the reading text at all. Down here, we might adapt the reading text for the level. Now, typically with reading texts, we choose a reading text <laughs> for elementary students, and quite often the level of the authenticity is quite low. It's not context rich. And then as they go up the level, the level of authenticity goes up. So the higher the level of the student, the higher the level of the authenticity of the text, quite a lot of the time. But this is unfair on the lower level students, on the elementary, the pre-intermediate students. We need them to be reading more authentic texts much earlier on, or texts that will interest and engage them. So what we're trying to do when we choose reading texts is actually increase the level of authenticity much more quickly in terms of our choice of reading texts, if we can. It's quite difficult to do. I'm going to stop talking, I'm going to do a reading activity that I would do with students and then talk about it in connection with this. Can you work in student A, student B, and there's a reading text called The Czech Republic and Dakar, Senegal. Here's what I want you to do. Can you fold the reading text in half? So it's in half, okay? Okay, here's the test. Student A, I want you to read about the Czech Republic. Student B, read about Dakar, Senegal. You have, wait, 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 wait. You have one minute to read it and memorize as much information as you can. Starting now. <laughs> 